Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Uh, yeah, we got a cool giveaway going on for a $99 eShop gift card. Head under the description or the pinned comment to uh, find out how to enter. I simplified it this time around. We'll see if I keep doing that because using these like giveaway places um, that help simplify things for you guys cost me a decent chunk of money that I could literally be putting towards the giveaways. So we'll see if I use it beyond this month. However, Let's get into the news piece because, hey, look, the Nintendo Switch is killing it. I think we all know it's been killing it. It destroyed 2020. Best sales year ever. Uh, Nintendo, I think, is even under-projecting what they're going to sell. They think it's going to be $26 million total at the end of their fiscal year, March 31st. If the MPD is anything to go by for the month of January, Nintendo is completely underselling the momentum of this platform because you got to remember... In the month of January, there really wasn't like a big game to push sales, right? There was not this big release like we have today in February with, you know, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Monster Hunter Rise next month, Pokemon Snap the month after that. So we have three straight months here with semi-major releases that are just going to skyrocket Switch sales even more. But January didn't. And yet, this happened. So as you see here, over on Nintendo, the Switch just recorded the strongest January sales of any games console since the Wii in 2010. This is any of them. doesn't matter if it's PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series 1, X360. It doesn't matter. You want to throw out the Neo Geo, even though that was before 2010. The point is that nothing has outsold what the Switch has done since literally the end of the peak years, Right? January of 2010 was roughly the end of the peak years of, of Wii. So it's not quite to the peak, right? It, the Switch hasn't ascended to the peak January. But there has been nothing in over a decade that has sold better hardware-wise in January than the Switch right now. So this obviously comes from Matt Piscatella. Uh, it says, just in case there's any doubt, the Switch is still doing the absolute business when it comes to sales nintendo's hybrid machine sold better than its industry rivals to be the best selling system across the u.s in january not content with simply outselling the playstation 5 and xbox series x switch actually sold more units in the u.s last month than any games console has managed since the wii back in 2010 so matt piscicello says sales of video game hardware were up 144 percent higher than January of 2020, reaching $319 million. This is the highest total for a January month since $323 million achieved in January of 2011. The Nintendo Switch was actually the best-selling hardware platform in units sold, so not dollar sales, units sold for the month of January. Unit sales of, J of Nintendo Switch were the highest of any platform in January month since the Nintendo Wii in January of 2010. Uh, yeah, and here we get to some of the top uh, top 20 sellers. So we'll just open this up directly here, and here's the top 20 games. Notable, the Nintendo games do not include digital sales. That's what the asterisks all mean by the Nintendo games. Uh, you see Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at number one, Assassin's Creed Valhalla at number two, uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales at number three, Madden at number four, and then Animal Crossing New Horizons at number five. Again, how high would Animal Crossing New Horizons be if digital sales were included? Number six is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Again, how high would it be with digital sales? Ring Fit Adventure at number seven. No digital sales for that because you have to have the accessory. Uh, at number eight, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Really interesting to see two Call of Duty games in the top ten for January. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at number nine. And then NBA 2K21 at uh, number uh, ten. Uh, with an asterisk of obviously some digital sales not included. Uh, obviously, we know Switch digital sales for sure aren't, aren't included in that because that game is on Switch. Uh, number 11 is where you still see Super Mario 3D All-Stars having a strong showing. Probably top 10, if, if, if we're honest, if they included digital sales. Uh, maybe it bumps Call of Duty out or something like that. But it just keeps going and going and going. And you'll see in the top 20 other games like Breath of the Wild, uh, Super Mario Party as well. Immortals Phoenix Rising, glad to see that make an appearance. Uh, and some other games as well. Some more general games like Minecraft and Just Dance and Cyberpunk still there. Big drop off for Cyberpunk 2. It was number 2 in December all the way down to number 18. Talk about a game just falling off the face of the earth. Uh, UFC 4 chiming in at that last spot for Electronic Arts. So I just find all of this to be wholly fascinating that 
It is 2021. Obviously, we're still dealing with a pandemic, and yet the Switch and Nintendo is still in the same position it was a decade ago, and that is on top of the world. Nintendo, 10 years later, I mean, think about it. I'm 34, so when I was 24 years old, which, by the way, was just before I met my fiance, right? So I hadn't even met her yet, okay? Because I met her, uh, I think, oh, two weeks after my birthday, I met her. So I, I was 25. So when I was 24, the Jan like the January of that year that I was 24, holy crap, Nintendo was on top back then. And now here I am a decade later, and Nintendo is back on top yet again. Uh, Nintendo did obviously has been uh, number one in MPD for a while. They were number one in MPD last January as well, and it's like 20 or 21 straight months or something like that. Uh, so Nintendo has a long streak going, but to be on top in this fashion, not just, you know, okay, it's the best-selling platform now, historically great selling. I mean, are we talking that Nintendo might have undersold how well the Switch is going to sell? Maybe they're going to hit 30 million past, you know, hit, hit 30 million, you know, just blow past their current projections for sales. After all, we don't have Monster Hunter Rise. The Switch keeps selling the gangbusters in Japan, and we know it's going to sell you know, like crazy when Monster Hunter Rise arrives. New Pokemon Snap, I, I think there's a little tepid there, not not really knowing how popular that game's going to be. It was a niche game back in the day. Is it going to be big today? I'll, I'm picking it up. I presume a lot of other people that played it are going to pick it up. But I don't know how big the audience is for that. I guess we're about to see like, if a game all about taking pictures of Pokemon is going to be able to survive uh, in this climate. Like it could back in the day when it was a more unique concept. Now it's coming back as new Pokemon Snap. I, I think that the Switch is set up for a massive start to this year. Obviously, the rest of us are just wondering what's next. Because uh, we understand Monster Hunter Rise is a big deal. We understand today, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, big deal uh, for Nintendo anyways. We obviously know that new Pokemon Snap, for some people, is going to be a big deal. But what's next? You know, we have Zelda's 25th anniversary here in nine days, right? 35th. Does I say 25th? 35th anniversary in nine days. So we know that's coming up. We know that Nintendo's likely going to do something for that because they celebrated the 20th, the 25th, and the 30th for Zelda. So they're probably going to celebrate the 35th anniversary in some way. They've done collections and stuff in the past. We speculated over all of that. We trademarks being filed uh, for the Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass happening uh, out in Australia. Makes you wonder if they're going to come back. Obviously, the Wind Waker HD exists on Wii U, hasn't been ported yet. We presume that and Twilight Princess HD are going to make its way to Switch probably this year. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is in development. We just had Age of Calamity last year. So, like, there's Zelda stuff happening. Could there be more Mario stuff happening? We haven't really had a new mainline Mario game since Mario Odyssey 2, or Mar Super Mario Odyssey, I'm sorry, back in 2017. Is it time to get another one of those, even though we just got the 3D World port? Uh, I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that could be happening right now. A new F-Zero game. What's up with Metroid Prime 4, Bayonetta 3? Like, we have a lot of unknowns for this year. But what is known is unlike last year, which, by the way, last year Nintendo killed it because they had Animal Crossing. But sans Animal Crossing, Nintendo had kind of an okay start to the year, right? Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, and then the Pinnacle game in this. This year is going to be a stronger start. You're starting with Mario. Now, I don't know about anything hitting the peak of Animal Crossing, but you're starting with Mario off already having strong sales, and then you're leading into Monster Hunter Rise, an exclusive Monster Hunter game that's going to be fantastic. Uh, looks great. The demo was awesome. And then you get into a Pokemon something. I honestly think the start of this year is going to be even bigger than last year that included Animal Crossing. So Nintendo's off to a fire start this year. We'll see what happens moving forward. All right, folks. I'm Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like. Uh, final note here, I do apologize about there not being a Prime News today. Uh, honestly, my kids didn't have school today, uh, so things kind of got all messed up in the morning. I still was going to get an episode out, but then by the time uh, things got organized and I got back from the grocery store, it was already like 11 o'clock, so... It's like, you know, I kind of kind of move on at this point and realize I'm probably not going to get one out today. Plus, they haven't really been performing that well. Doesn't mean they're going to go away. I'm going to kind of take the weekend to salivate on what's working with Prime News and what's not working and kind of maybe reinvent the wheel on Monday to make it a, a bit cleaner 
of a show a bit easier to digest and maybe just uh, a simpler show where I don't have to do uh, any really, really, really crazy editing to get you guys all the news. Because what's the point of Prime News, right? To deliver a bunch of news stories to you every morning or like right first thing in the afternoon. All right, folks. Anyways, I'm Nathaniel Robojets from the Center Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.